in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 Paul himself was teaching this was the Gentiles now receiving the baptism in the house of Cornelius and he said how God anointed the word anoint um, originally means to smear with oil but the essence is to legitimize an operation so that the territory accepts you as legitimate that means if you are not anointed, you are not authorized, you are not ordained. Are we together now? So when the Bible says how God anointed Jesus, that meant that his operations were legitimized in the realm of the spirit. No wonder the sons of Sceva could say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He said, but who are you? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power the bible says he went about doing good and healing how many all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him i define the anointing of the holy spirit as god's ability it's important to not just say an ability god's ability that is at work in a human or a material vessel the anointing is defined as god's ability trapped and at work in a human or material vessel empowering that believer to accomplish listen carefully to accomplish his purposes and to produce supernatural results let me take it again that the anointing is defined as god's ability at work in a human or material vessels empowering such a vessel to accomplish his purposes God's purposes and then to produce supernatural results it is impossible to command extraordinary supernatural results except and unless by the anointing why do we need the anointing I'll give you two reasons very quickly why do we need the anointing when I have skill? Why do we need the anointing when I have relationships? Why do I need the anointing when I'm a good preacher? Why do I need the anointing when I am sincere? In fact, why do I need the anointing when I'm already saved? Two reasons. One, to subdue the forces of darkness, fighting against our destinies and the purposes of the kingdom. The first reason why we are given access to the anointing is to subdue in experience now the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and the purposes of the kingdom psalm 66 and verse 3 popular scripture it says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you through the greatness of thy power hallelujah and prophet isaiah taught us that the yoke is only destroyed he said it shall come to pass in that day that the yoke shall be taken from off your neck the burden from off your shoulder and listen it says the yoke shall be destroyed not because you have stayed long in ministry the yoke shall be destroyed not because you're an apostle prophet teacher whatever it is the yoke is only destroyed because of the anointing the second reason why we need the anointing is to fulfill our god-given assignments and to advance the course of the kingdom 
the second reason which is a more superior reason why the anointing is needed in the life of the believer is to fulfill our god-given assignments and to advance the course of the kingdom it's important for you to understand and to appreciate that skill and human abilities can only go so far maybe i should take it again since you're writing to fulfill our god-given assignments and to advance the cause of the kingdom i learned this very early in my life the limitation of human strength the skill of men i've seen very skilled intelligent people i've seen orators i have met all kinds of people from a standpoint of value these men and women were and some of them still remain exceptional except that all you have remains barren and impotent until activated by the anointing hallelujah in acts chapter 4 and verse 33 we considered that yesterday the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and he said great grace great grace was upon them all great grace please listen to me the possibilities that we command in this kingdom the possibilities that we command in this kingdom is a product of the kind and the dimension of the engracing that is upon your life i don't have the time to teach extensively on the anointing otherwise you would learn that the anointing is in levels and the anointing is in dimensions hallelujah dimensions means that the anointing to prosper may not necessarily produce healing so just because you are anointed does not mean you generically have what solves all problems the only way to understand this is to consider power like we teach in physics right so you find out that the same electricity is causing this fan to you know move around the same electricity is causing this keyboard to make sound several things are happening by the same electricity but you see the dynamics differ so just because you are anointed does not mean everything will be possible most believers get flattered into the fact that i have been prayed for or i had an encounter and then it means that i have the anointing and it does all things no the anointing is in dimensions as i'll be showing you so a man can have the healing anointing and strangely be poor and broke with no favor a man can have the grace for wisdom and yet not have visibility every possibility in the kingdom has a grace component that activates it and the assignment of conferences like this is number one to learn doctrine that the way of the kingdom be expounded to you more perfectly and then number two that you receive the requisite level of grace that helps you to defend that truth it is frustrating to know something and not be able to prove it and this is the assignment of power power always proves that your speakings are not a lie do you know why we call god all powerful and we call him a god of integrity because everything he says he has the power to make happen so when the bible says god is not a man that he should lie it is not that god cannot lie it is that god does not lie a lie is anything you say that has another influence that makes it not true so there is no such thing with god anything god says if he calls you blessed he has enough power to veto whatever the current situation is and insist that his word does not become a lie you get the point now so when god comes he does not consult with the current situation the moment he calls you blessed all the powers that reside in the godhead are channeled towards that statement not to you they look like they are coming to you because the word was sent to you no the power does not come to men the power follows his word so if that word comes to you it will look like the power is on his way to you are we learning now so when the bible says i can tell someone tomorrow you will have a car very interesting statement but i may not have the resources in this example to give the person with respect to that scenario i lied 
but when God says you will have a car all the resources in heaven ah, most people do not understand the power listen without the word of God spoken the power of God has no ministry the assignment of God's power is to insist that his word does not fail did you get that now so the impartation you are receiving now is only coming to honor the word of God that is in you for I am a man under authority the centurion said having soldiers under me listen carefully I say to one go and he goeth now that is power you can say but whether it happens is where power is the ultimate test of power was demonstrated in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4 and God said light be and the Bible says and he saw when you say and you cannot see there was no power there he said it it was he saw it and it was good so the centurion said I know you and I understand the laws of power I am a man under the authority of the government of Rome and I enjoy a level of authority and power. I can say to one, go, and he goes. I can say to one, come. So you don't need to come to my house. Speak the word only. And Jesus looked at the centurion and said, who taught you this? I have not found such faith. No, not in Israel. And the Bible says that self same hour, that self same hour, are you learning now there is nothing you cannot do there's no mountain you cannot move if you have said it then you will do it you have a track record of keeping your word and you're not about to stop now here is the reason why many believers do not find performance to the speakings of God they only contend for the knowledge but they do not contend for the grace dimension that activates what he has said everything you find in scripture has an anointing component that makes it true in your life so when the Bible says you are the head and not the tail that is truth but have you got the power to make that true otherwise it will remain a story that it shall come to pass if you diligently abide deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if you diligently you know adhere to the word of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all nations now that is a statement that is only activated when the grace for visibility comes on you there is such a dimension of the anointing that makes what was hidden to be revealed it says neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel that means that is a possibility so the question now is not whether you were anointed before or whether you came here anointed we have to dissect your life by the results you are commanding and with surgical precision we can show you that the reason why you keep saying this and this is not working is that what you have is the information but the the, the anointing component for this is not there you see when the grace of god comes upon a man it speaks immediately how do I know what is upon me? By looking at the possibilities around you. The Bible says, Thou anointest my head with oil. He does not anoint your cup, but strangely your cup can be used as a tool to know what is on your head. So if your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. If the ministry is empty, don't blame the ministry. If the business is not working, don't blame the business. It is only responding to what is on your head. Are you learning now so the anointing listen is in dimensions apostle before i came for this conference i confess that i have the grace for wisdom and it is shown by the superior decisions that you're making so far so you have a dimension of that anointing but do you have the favor of god at work in you do you have the power to prosper the bible never said the wisdom to prosper it said the power to prosper because strong men retain wealth it takes strength more than skill is someone learning now even for jesus the father had to declare 
that this is my beloved son and then in one of the accounts again he says hear ye him and everywhere jesus went everything heard him everything not everyone everything including a fish so you can be very anointed but the only people who hear you are your tribesmen you can be very anointed but the only people who hear you are those who are sympathetic to you because although you have the word that hear ye him unction has not come on you but listen when it lands from where you are not where you want to go i assure you it says from where thou art you will be surprised that in a strange way a way that can only be described as though holding on to a charm listen please sit down the anointing is in dimensions but then the anointing is also in levels that means you can have more listen carefully that you can have the grace of god like every other thing in the kingdom comes in form of a seed but multiplication is a possibility in the kingdom it says grace and peace be multiplied so just because you receive the anointing for wisdom or favor do you know that there are superior dimensions of that same grace so two people can have a prophetic grace anointing two people can have the power to prosper but it is in levels so in a conference like this you can open up yourself for more yes you are a prophet but we are still doubting you because of the left the margin of inaccuracy is too much now it doesn't mean you are false it just means that there are Do you believe what i'm teaching you yes sir the bible says to give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure that means it is your responsibility to stop people from disbelieving you by the abundance of the working of the spirit within your life he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet he measured a thousand cubits of the same thing and it was to my knees is that in your bible he now measured a thousand cubits it was to my loins then he measured a thousand cubits the fourth level and it was an overflowing river so you can see that you may be in a healing meeting and someone can come and maybe just not to demean the supernatural but healings that even the person sitting near the person who was killed would doubt and say you didn't look sick but there are miracles called notable miracles miracles that can they can preach for one year non-stop are we together many of us here i presume have found our place in life but we are operating at a level of grace that is far lower than the demand upon our lives there is need for an upgrade do you believe that yes when you look onto jesus one of the things you receive listen because the bible says and we all but we all with unveiled face beholding him as in a mirror what did he say happens to us we are changed that's what is happening to you we look to yahweh yahweh our hope is yahweh yahweh we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh. Many years ago, then, you know, people didn't know me like they do now. So I had the liberty to do many things. Every time I entered a city for a meeting, I would usually go a day before or wait a day extra. And I would always search for those that were doing great things for the kingdom. And I would always find a way to contact those graces. There are few campgrounds in this nation that have not gone to. There are few denominations by the grace of God that have not preached in. And every time I go, I like to study what did God do with them. It doesn't matter even if they've lost the texture of the power that is at work there because mantles don't leave the earth that means it is somewhere waiting for discernment and honor even if the oil is in your house it's possible you will not benefit from it that woman had the oil in her room for a long time the oil was hearing the conversation and yet it could not profit her hallelujah yeah 
And I'll tell you a few of the stories, maybe two or so. I remember one time, I had the opportunity to visit, you know, a lot of all the campgrounds, you know, especially from Lagos, Ibadan Express, where all those campgrounds you see. When I enter those places, sometimes they keep me in their guest houses when I'm ministering either in the church there or any other place. And I wait for everyone to go and sleep. Then in the night, I will get up and go out to the campground. Usually you'll find pockets of people praying and I just find somewhere and say, Lord, what did you deposit here? What did you put on the ground here? I may not have access at that time i didn't it was not easy to meet the fathers they didn't have a relationship with them but with hunger in my heart and expectation like reverend sam has taught you i would pray and pray certain encounters pray certain mantles pray certain anointings and you see the thing about the anointing is like pregnancy you may doubt it for a few weeks but eventually you will know you are pregnant you can't be heavy and not know hallelujah the same way something was coming on someone you will know you will know that finally this grace I've been praying for has come upon my life hallelujah I always didn't walk in the prophetic like I do now you know word of knowledge here and there but I remember one of the most profound encounters that changed my life I was watching William Branham watching him you know I had several of their videos I would just watch in the night and I remember it was an interview, a very rare interview. And I was looking at the man, such a display of humility. This was a man who was mightily used by God. Now towards the end of his life, because of several things that happened, ignorant people who do not have not even studied church history and are not even students of revival, kept making all kinds of blind, ignorant conclusions about him. This was a man who would sit to pray in the wilderness and would watch squirrels form and run into the bush and I said Lord but this man is your servant I, I don't know whatever happened in his life but this is very powerful and I respect your walking in him how did you walk in a man like this and then a miracle happened right there it was like something left that laptop and just rested upon my head a very cold sensation for over a period of 30 minutes it was just going down my body I said what is happening to me now at that time I, I'm, I'm, I'm by God's grace I'm a I'm a rich beneficiary of encounters I can teach on encounters I'm not ignorant of those experiences but here was something happening to me that was strange and by the next meeting I went to the power of God The anointing is in levels. There is a reason why I'm telling you this. Because one, you see, the enemy of more is the current that you have. Most times when you are in total bankruptcy, your hunger is at a level because you are aware that you do not have. But when you have something small, you do not know what else can come. Don't tell me I'm a prophet or I'm a prophetess. To what degree have you spoken the counsel of God for kings to hear you? If you are not there you are not there apostle and prosperous to what degree how much can you give the kingdom and still sleep if you have if that has not happened you are not yet there are we together now yes we are talking of serving the purposes of the kingdom at a level where your life becomes a statement your life becomes a case study that people can learn god through the excellency of your results this is what God wants to do in your life and even my life. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Now, very quickly, I want to just wrap up with this and then we'll pray. How to receive the anointing. Reverend Sam began to speak powerfully on the laws of power. And I'm praying that you find a way of honoring your way to his life to get the remaining everything that gets to seven. You will need to hear what he has to say about the loss of power but then let me teach you very quickly the anointing comes upon a believer genuine anointing 
comes upon a believer according to scripture by two principal channels number one directly from god through encounters please write the anointing can come upon a believer directly from god acts chapter 10 and verse 38 let's read the first five words acts 10 38 or the first four words ready look up let's read one two go one more time who anointed jesus you can have an encounter with god you see because the anointing is spiritual you can receive of a spiritual substance and have it manifest here the anointing is not like physical money that you must receive naira or dollars physically solomon is another example the bible says in a dream god came to him and imparted upon him wisdom and understanding heart was given to him and he said i have also given you riches and honor like no other king has he woke up if you were solomon's roommate you would get up knowing that you had a nice night not knowing that the person who just woke up would never be the same again and they started seeing the excellency of his impartation through the results that followed you can receive directly from god number two the second biblical channel which is the more frequent one as far as receiving the anointing is concerned is impartation from the carriers of the anointing 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 will continue but i'm seeing doves that's what i'm seeing inside this view i'm like doves not just doves and i'm seeing it i'm seeing it land now on two people and for one of them you are a woman listen carefully please i'm seeing it land on this woman and the lord is telling me that he's he started by having prophetic dreams that the things that you see used to happen but somehow it looked like it just dried up but that there is a restoration a restoration a restoration let me speak it already over that person i don't know who that person is but in the name of jesus wherever you are in this auditorium or following online i declare that that grace rests upon you now I declare that that grace rests upon you now please sit down sit down impartation what is impartation impartation is a spiritual system of transferring possibilities possibilities are they are they have they have they can be substantiated and they can be transferred from person to person possibilities you can transfer possibilities please listen carefully and the assignment of impartation is to transfer possibilities from the careers to those whose hearts are hungry in philippians chapter 1 from verse 7 the b part for sake of time philippians chapter 1 from verse 7 it says ye all are partakers of my grace paul is speaking to the church in philippi he's saying that all of you can be partakers that i came to you in philippi manifesting certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities and that under a certain condition you can be a partaker you know how we light candles you can have 10 candles that have the potential to burn but do not have they are not lit and you can take just one is that true and just in a matter of minutes you will not even know which one lit which again that's how impartation works when you impart graces it does not diminish what you carry if what you carry diminishes you just stop keeping the law that preserves it is someone learning ye all are partakers of my grace in romans chapter 1 from verse 11 romans 1 11, paul was speaking and he said for i long to see you that i may impart upon you some spiritual gift 
to the end that ye may be established established in business established in ministry established in governance politics whatever area of endeavor hallelujah the bible is full of people who received certain graces that prior to that time they didn't have and all was a product of impartation hallelujah in numbers chapter 27 when we read 18 to 20 let's look at it very quickly numbers 27 18 to 20 thank you it says and the lord said unto moses take thee joshua the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit so this man was not without the spirit he said although he has the spirit he said thou shall lay your hands upon him verse 19 and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation he says and give him charge of their sight may verse 20 happen to someone in this service and thou shalt put some of thine honor you see that honor is a grace what is honor the ability to be perceived and be rewarded to match your true worth when the grace for honor comes upon you you are perceived and you are rewarded to match your true worth thou shalt put some of thy honor upon him why that the congregation of the children may be obedient so obedience is a product of honor not sincerity you can be as sincere as you are as a preacher and find out that as a preacher as a businessman it looks like your people and even your territory does not seem to hearken to you it is the absence of honor hallelujah are we learning deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 puts perspective to what happened you will see the kind and the dimension of the spirit that came upon joshua 34 9 deuteronomy deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 and joshua the son of Nun was what full of the spirit notice the bible says he had the spirit now the bible says he is full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of israel hearkened to him as they did moses so they did not hearken to moses because he was called moses he was carrying a possibility upon his head that was creating a reaction hallelujah time will fail me to talk to you about the story of moses and the 70 elders you find that in numbers 11 how that the spirit that was upon one man came upon 70 people isn't this profound one man was carrying a spirit and yet he could not speak well and it came on 70 elders and none of them could keep quiet yet one person was carrying that and he was silent let me tell you the truth we are all equal in christ but as far as the distribution of these graces it has separated men into cadres. how can part of the spirit on one man comes upon 70 elders they stood prophesying from morning till night non-stop and yet that was what moses was carrying quietly In 2 Kings chapter 2, when you read from verse 1 to 15, the entire story between the impartation, the impartation that transpired between Elijah and Elisha. Finally, Elijah is about to be taken and he tells Elisha, ask. I hope you know that Elisha at this point was only serving. He did not have the privilege to be trained. The sons of the prophet were there with jealousy and the rest we know god is taking him we are that prophetic enough but they could not receive anything and here was a hungry and a desperate farmer and elijah said all right ask and he said a double portion of your spirit ah he said do you know the rules of impartation you have asked a hard thing but if you can see me as i'm taking off was he not looking at him so there is a kind of seeing your concentration your faith that's what reverend sam was teaching you that your faith has an eye 
and it can see it can describe what it wants i know i desire a double portion and the bible says the heavens were open and he saw chariots and he shouted my father my father the chariots of israel and the horsemen thereof the mantle landed and he stood before jordan he said where is the lord god of elijah and the waters parted hither and thither the sons of the prophet looked at him and they testified that the spirit of elijah doth rest upon elijah there are many of you that when you leave this conference some of you as early as tomorrow that as you mount your pulpit to preach or your various they would look at you and say no i've been with you 10 years what changed where did you go to what did you listen to this is not the you that we used to know in the name of jesus may that be your testimony yeah. hallelujah there are two rules for receiving impartation and this is what i'll wrap up with number one is honor number two is service listen carefully impartations do not just happen arbitrarily there are rules there are laws in the spirit that control impartation the first is honor the second is service honor is a very powerful spiritual law now watch this isaac wants to bless his son watch this now isaac wants to bless his son esau and he says esau come i want to bless you and even though i'm a rich man having cattle at the back of my house if i lay my hands on you like that nothing would happen because there is a law go to the wilderness go and get the same thing i already have he says make me venison make sure it's the one that delights my soul that means pay attention as you are preparing this you are careless you will still miss the impartation make me venison such as my soul loves he said that i may bless you before i die and esau got up and left and while all of that discussion was happening you, you, you've read the scripture their mother heard it and she said ah jacob come something is about to leave your father to your brother and you might miss it go to the back of the house we are going to deceive your father and he said no no no. but my brother is a hairy man even though this man is blind he's still prophetic he said i will handle that and when he came to his father he said how come you came so early and hear what he said he said because the lord gave me how come you are not supposed to have arrived by this time i'm not teaching on speed when we're imparting the grace i will tell you he said no you should not have arrived but he said remember there is a possibility that god can give men he gave me and that's why and he said okay i understand let me reach out to you and he said the voice is that of jacob but the body is that of esau that is already a lesson for deception where the voice becomes that of jacob but the skin is of esau anyway he lays hands on him and releases the blessing and just when he's done blessing jacob esau comes and he said who is this he said father i'm back who did i bless and then he began to cry an adult crying and he said nothing is left he said it is finished question how did he measure it where did he keep it how did he know that it is finished already this guy was skillful so by the law of value he would not be poor in life at least yet he was crying because something he wanted had gone and the father said it's over to abraham i hope you know abraham had many children are we together now abraham had about six in total am i right on that ishmael isaac and then the others with the concubines when it was time for allocating blessings the bible says he called all of them and gave them of all the physical things but he says to isaac he gave isaac all what else did he give him called all he never gave isaac any physical thing he gave the rest cattle but he gave isaac all and then the bible says isaac departed with that all and everything started gravitating from everywhere and looking for him 
and Isaac sowed in that land by reason of what you carried and reaped that same year a hundredfold the Bible says he began to prosper he went forward he advanced and the Philistines envied him honor let me submit to you and I say this with every sense of responsibility the reason why many preachers and many people do not receive in the body of Christ is because for some strange reason I think it culture has a role to play in this too we have mastered the art of trivializing people's sacrifices and their track record with God just because you were not there in the wilderness does not mean David was not there so when we see men and women of God arise in power commanding certain levels of possibilities chances are excellent that we just begin to feel they were lucky or maybe something just happened to them no it's a very it's a very wrong you can hear Reverend Sam was speaking about when he was in Azare in Bauchi state praying in the wilderness in the bush anybody who is relevant and serious now must be able to tell you their wilderness face where they sought God blindly, went to bushes, went to under trees, went somewhere, sat all kinds of places. I told you yesterday that kings are not trained in palaces. No. The palace did a bad job on Moses. He had to be relocated to the wilderness to be trained well. Hallelujah. So most times, we just have, for want of, what this this mentality of i know this person i know this one he's my brother he's my sister i know this person and we don't receive anything lift up your hands and you're like what is there i'm also prophesying and you find out that we continue to shortchange ourselves hallelujah when i learned the law of honor it is one of the most potent laws that have worked in my life probably second only to the law of encounter every time you communicate honor the gates of a man the bowels of a man's spirit is genuinely open do you know that you can lay hands on a man and the person who laid hands he knows that nothing came it's just so that the man will go away and not disturb you but in all honesty you know between you and god that nothing came on that man's head but there is a way that your heart can be opened and i'm praying that today someone will give his destiny a chance that your heart be open to receive i have been a seeker of god's presence but i've also followed i've pursued men and women that carry genuine graces you do not know how far i've gone on this journey of search for genuine anointings genuine anointings hallelujah I would read God's generals and read the books and among the I was not just looking for the stories I was searching for any persons who participated in the entire process who were within reach so that I could access them and at least honor them most of us have this and, and again like Reverend Sam said I think is 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 a misunderstanding on our theology I have God I have a Holy Spirit I don't need any man to do anything it's not true it's not true read your Bible well and look at the results of people who advocate these things no even in heaven the foundations of heaven have the the names of the 12 apostles as the foundation God has an organogram there is a way he builds when you meet Jesus Christ the chief cornerstone the next ministries that you must meet to rise as an edifice is the apostolic and the prophetic the Bible calls them foundations jesus the word incarnate needed three prophets in his life to rise number one simeon the prophet number two anna the prophetess number three john the baptist not to count the number of men that played roles in his life where would jesus be if joseph of arimathea was not there simon of cyrene helping him to carry the cross when saul who would later be called paul when he met with jesus jesus himself directed him to the house of ananias to go and wait for a man to come and continue you would think having met jesus you will not meet any man again 
it was not Jesus that got him filled with the Holy Ghost. Ananias is go to a street called Straight. In the house of one Judah, you will meet Paul. He's blind, but he has seen in a vision that you are coming. He's been fasting three days. And he said, Brother Saul, Jesus whom you saw has sent me that you will, you, you will receive your sight and be filled with the Spirit. And by a prophet, the Lord, the emphasis is the Lord. But don't ignore the vessel. Don't focus on this and forget that there is something holding it. You don't keep your Bible here. This is a support system. This is the emphasis, Jesus. But you will never see Jesus lifted without the body that lifts him. He is called the head of the body. So many people have aborted prophetic seasons in their lives because their hearts were not open to receive. Now I know that when it has to do with the apostolic, the prophetic, and the ministry of the spirit, there is a lot of correction and balance that needs to happen sadly, whether in Nigeria here or across Africa. Unfortunately, there are all shades of stories I don't want to go into now. There are people who because of this that i'm teaching you may want to teach human worship it's as if you have to worship and bow down no 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 that's not what i'm teaching but let me let me truly tell you that for as long as your heart is not open to communicate honor no matter how much that man of god loves you there will be no transference i submit this to you for as long as he's your colleague for as long as he's your tribesman jesus your jesus entered a city and the bible says he could not do any mighty works he marveled at their unbelief yet there were others thou son of david have mercy on me the woman with the issue of blood discerned i know i should not touch the priesthood i am a woman who who has uncleanliness and i should not touch i will pay the price later on but as for i can't let this man pass me It is why those who are closest to the anointing remain stunted the most. Because familiarity has a very unique way of cheating people. They never, you see that now. God has gathered us here all through the sessions, speaker after speaker, helping us to understand certain things in the spirit. And right now, within the few minutes that we have, someone is going to be receiving something but my prayer is that you don't just be a spectator and say wow wonderful what a great meeting advance was a great conference and then wait for next year again for nothing at all to change the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth john chapter 5 oh i know 16 john i know impartation oh the system of transfer but where is the result in your life my assignment this morning is for you to be angry to say no something has to change i'm tired of calling a miracle service and praying and people live as if they, they are just living a funeral because nobody was healed nobody I, I can't keep giving excuses i lied i said they did not fast well i lied i said they did but get angry in your spirit as a man of God that, that your members know they are already used to the word not working in your mouth so when you say you are blessed they're on their way out because they know it's a waste to say amen they reserve that energy to shout amen for a voice they trust it must change the Bible speaking about Samuel said he was a man that none of his words fell to the ground if if Samuel spoke to you when the donkey was missing they said let's stop wasting our time there is a prophet there is a seer there is one who has obtained grace from god if we meet this man our problems will be solved can men say that about you we are going through this family challenge we are going through this situation we are tired of poverty but we know there is a man that god has raised in abuja there is a man that god has raised in nigeria let him make a declaration over our lives
please listen to me ladies and gentlemen for the sake of those connected to you open up your heart for the anointing even if not for your sake man of god realize that there are people you are the only voice through which they will hear god and if you allow yourself to be stunted and not rise you are destroying the destinies of innocent people you are a businessman here but can you truly say that grace is at work in you business is more than buying and selling there are many anointings that god is going to be imparting but there are four of them i want you to listen before we begin to pray number one the first grace i believe by the spirit of god that someone is about to receive please help someone i just saw fire coming on a gentleman right now i just saw fire just landing on him and the lord is telling me that this gentleman is going to become a very mighty prophet i don't know who that person is help them please in the name of jesus a mighty prophet that's what i saw in the spirit right now that fire coming on there this gentleman wearing green i'm seeing oil being poured on his head this one sitting in front in the name of jesus the son of the living god that you will be so stirred up in the spirit please pay attention number one is the grace for encounters do you know encounters the assignment of encounters is to create conviction you cannot be persuaded and you cannot walk supernaturally in the spirit without encounters blessed is the man whom god causes to approach him number two the second grace that you are going to be receiving to is the grace for visibility hmm. is there such a grace that can cause the nations to know i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm playing with you in this april month of april you know but i can tell you without the grace for visibility i don't care what you do on social media i don't care what you do around nobody will pay attention to you this world is full of evil and selfish people people are too busy pursuing their own agenda whatever will make them turn and invest their attention upon you must be grace from heaven there are businesses right now that need the grace for visibility i was listening to some of you whilst um pastor bology was speaking yesterday you have your business the woman who spoke about poultry and the rest the grace for visibility is a wonder i remember those days right from zaria in that in that supposed place people were coming from all over the world in spite of kidnappings they would come in and were not very high profile people come land enter a gulf and have all these people drive inconvenience themselves hotels that were not even and they would still stay with joy when the grace for visibility is upon you your life becomes a wonder i'm saying this listen do you know that noah would have died if he had to look for the animals one by one to enter the ark there was a grace that came upon him and all the animals on their own seven by seven two by two everywhere they were they found themselves to that ark that there is such a grace that can come on you the woman who met with jesus con contacted that grace immediately she ran and said come see a man without argument they followed her we don't trust where we are going but they were still going the grace for visibility the grace for visibility many of you are too hidden to be impactful you are anointed you've done your homework but nobody knows you are there your partners are not aware you are there those who have been sent by god are still asking lord you made me prosper who is the person i'm to help you are there but they cannot see you remember there are other people who were asked to train certain donkeys but to never ride on them 
because the rider will be different the man who trained the donkey that jesus rode upon the bible says a donkey that no man had ridden not even the owner how will you be training a donkey that means there are people making profits from certain businesses and god has already given them instructions that the profit for this business is not for you hallelujah when the grace for visibility is upon you it no longer becomes an issue of location please believe me i know what i'm saying any other thing just becomes an added advantage it does not matter if you are in the cave yes sir the nations will search for you i'm not talking people groups they will search for you kings will look for you and, and and run to you and say teach us the counsel of God show us the ways of God when Jesus was born was it not a star that signified his arrival of a baby and the Magi saw it they said something is happening let's follow the star and they carried gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh not to meet an adult not to meet someone who had solved their problem to meet someone who had the grace for visibility that your star can arise and those who know can see that in Abuja God has raised a man God has raised a woman God has raised a business please believe that I'm not deceiving you the grace for visibility number three the third grace you are going to receive is the grace for speed look at me please please look up please look up let me have your attention do you know that the greatest asset any man has outside of eternal life is the advantage of time do not forget the realm of the spirit both demonic and of god agree that time is an important component in fact the most important component are we together now every other thing finds its value in time and with time that means when you lose time it doesn't matter what else you have you have failed when you meet a dying man he does not pray for more wisdom when you meet a dying man he does not pray for more prosperity the request of a dying man is time isaiah 38 give me time at time 15 years lose money but have time you will get it back in fact lose your credibility but have time you will get it back so the zenith of dominion is not dominion over spirits is dominion over time and when the devil wants to destroy a man he does something to your time so that time continues to pass with no corresponding achievements represented in it this is what we call delay this is what we call stagnation this is what we call retrogression i want you to listen the biblical proof of delay is when only your age is growing nothing else grows in your life only your age you just keep adding days but no corresponding achievements was it not your bible that said teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom what is the wisdom to redeem the time to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise many of us right now culturally speaking or by reason of our background you started with time already against you you got born again late it took you many years to argue about the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Finally, you got filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, you are 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, 60 years probably. And there is still a lot to be done. There are two ways God helps men with respect to time. Number one is speed. Number two is restoration. These are the forces of advantage allocated to help men gain time let me repeat again number one is speed number two is restoration restoration is god taking the events that should have happened and bringing it to your future to happen 
and I will restore the years. It is not only things God restores, he can restore years. Years of doing error in ministry. You started ministry early, but because of poor mentorship, for 10 years you were doing a lot of rubbish. Now you got serious with God and discovered that you've wasted 10 years. By that 10 years, you would have had some level of establishment now. Now you have to start afresh again. You don't need progress. You need speed. Progress is forward movement. Speed is not just for you to move forward. It is to gain the time you have lost. And that grace must come on somebody this morning. Your Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. Is that in your Bible? Elijah did not have a chariot, but the Bible says he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel. Number two, the Bible talks about Jesus. He left to a solitary place to pray. And the Bible says the disciples used the boat and they went ahead of him. They were six hours ahead of Jesus. You would have called that delay. But he got up from the place of prayer and he turned and started walking on water. He walked on water and caught up with them. They were even afraid. They thought it was a ghost. He said, no, be not afraid, it is I. Peter said, if it be thou, let me step into that possibility too. How come we're using boats and laboring and you just walk on water like that? There are times you don't need the water to part. You can walk on it. Some of you are supposed to have obtained this grace. You've been praying forever for the river to pass. And God says, listen, this river is not going to part. Walk on it. The grace for speed. Number four. The last of the many anointings you'll be receiving is the grace for signs and wonders. I thought a bit on it yesterday you may want to get the teaching signs and wonders the supernatural the miraculous signs and wonders are beyond just healing no commanding possibilities over lives over territories it is a grace for signs and wonders that will make all men look for you not everyone is sick but everyone needs supernatural possibilities in their lives you can program a climate of favor over businessmen I didn't even add that one that is a very important one we can spend the whole day this grace for favor I didn't even add it you may add it as a fifth one because some of you that's why you came for this conference if you drop the grace for favor and you drop the grace for visibility for me I will pick favor do you know why the number one reason people succeed in life is because of the favor of God the proof of favor is not money no that is a proof of wisdom that is a proof of skill the proof of favor is access to the hearts of men listen carefully when you you know the favor of God is at work in your life through the tripartite coexistence of unusual kindness unusual access an unusual acceptance don't forget this if this tripartite combo are not working in your life it is not favor when the favor of god is at work in a life i i remind you again unusual kindness unusual access and unusual acceptance we're going to pray I believe that Reverend Sam and his dear wife at the back of his heart is the desperate cry to see that by next year's advance that people come here with all kinds of testimonies and say Reverend Sam look what God used this conference to bring look the ministry that looked like nothing was happening that grace just came upon me grace for speed favor signs and wonders look what is now happening in my church i'm having the opportunity to become a blessing in a very very definite way i don't know if you've heard anything from all that i've said but in the next one minute i leave you with your maker cry from the depth of your heart remember 
that it is your hunger and thirst please cry from your heart man of God you are doing this for the sake of your congregation you are doing this for the sake of those your business people please pray I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me Please make sure you pray. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. Hallelujah. Not too long ago, I went to preach in a particular nation. And when I got to that nation, coincidentally, our Father in the Lord, Baba Deboe, also came to have a private meeting there. And so I requested to just come and honor him and our mother and when I got there we, you know just cracked jokes and spoke and then I got down my knees and for the first time most times he would pray for me alone but this time around he was together with our mother and I will not tell you what they told me but I tell you the truth that if you receive that kind of blessing and prophecy upon your life you can go to bed it was it was from it was from the depth of his spirit and mommy was by his side and he released a blessing from his spirit man you see great men are made by secret experiences most of them don't share it but it does not mean it is not there there are many things that God has granted upon our heads that produce the things that we see. If Reverend Sam should come up with his wife, they would tell you striking moments where one thing after the other happened. One thing after the other. I remember one time I went to preach for a particular ministry and they kept me at the prayer city, MFM. And when I had finished preaching later in the night when everybody had gone to sleep, protocol had gone, nobody to disturb me. I came out and I went to the prayer ground and I lay down there and I cried. I said, God, I thank you for a rich prayer life that you have given me. But there are people who have this as an office. May that grace rest upon my life. Hallelujah. I can tell you story upon story. Some of these people have gone to be with the Lord. And so I have searched for those they imparted upon and say, what did they tell you before they died? I went to preach in a particular nation not too long. It was an incredible meeting. One of the highest they had had in many, many years. 65,000 people. And they told me, they said, one of the fathers of faith said, the last time this happened was when Maurice Orulo came and I was his interpreter. I said, Daddy, that means he prayed for you. I never had the opportunity to meet him sadly. But can you pray for me? He said, ah, great apostle. I said, no, leave what happened on, on the crusade ground. What happened on the crusade ground is there. Please, can you place something upon my head? Are we together? I once met a group of widows. All of them had lost their husbands. They covenanted with themselves as a prayer group to keep praying for me. That's all they do. Seven of them. My God, if these women pray for you, seven of them successful people and i had the honor of meeting them and they were all happy wanting to kneel down i said i will not be that stupid i'm wise enough you've lost your husbands and you dedicated yourself to pray for me i will be stupid to stand there and do emoji i got down my knees i said as mothers from the bowels of your spirit pour out that blessing 
let it come from the depth of your heart I don't know how many times I may have shared it in this blessed church my encounter with equity you know the long life encounter and I remember the high point of it was not the fact that the oldest man there prayed for me but I remember the wife of the man who had died 136 years and the wife was still alive and I pleaded with her someone interpreted what I was saying she only could speak Yoruba said please let this I don't know whether I'm a great-grandchild now or whatever I will call I said please and the woman tapped me we entered a room and she was showing me the photos that was the husband of her youth and you know those days they married as teenagers and I said please whatever it is that was on him that has been on her can she release on me she said kneel down and she removed her shoes and placed her legs on the ground and for 15 minutes this woman was reigning would you call her a grandmother a great grandmother's blessings listen I want you to know that God did not put this meeting this is beyond falling down and standing up this is reprogramming a plethora of graces just resting on your life and then to see what happens years ago I was in Joss I went to buy sugar cane and then I saw two women old women and I decided to pay for them they didn't have much but I said please you are mothers let me just honor you and they said no 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 I said I insist and I paid it was not more than hundred naira and the next thing they looked at me and they began to bless this young boy and one of the women looked at me and she said my son forever walk upon gold I don't believe those people were ordinary women I don't believe that so I don't know what dimension is deficient in your ministry open your mouth in one minute you are lying down on a ground here I like you to pray please cry from the depth of your heart cry to the God of heaven advance pray advance pray 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 just a few minutes and we're done man of God pray doors are about to be opened for you hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 It's a new season in ministry. It's a new season in ministry. Please pray one minute, don't be tired. Zion's King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 
let me speak over you now I'm going to pray over you and when I do a point is going to come when I will kindly invite Reverend Sam there is a grace upon his life that I sense in my spirit that you must have God has granted him unusual acceptance even among the Caucasians even across the nations of the earth and it is a grace that many people need even at this point in their lives but i want to pray for you i decree and declare right now the grace that drives a man to the secret place to hunger and seek for god take that grace now take that receive that grace right now that grace for the secret place let it come like fire let it burn everything that is not of god in the name of jesus christ number two i don't know what has hidden your glory hidden your destiny but i stand by the apostolic and the prophetic as one helped by God in the name of Jesus rise to be global rise to be global by the spirit of the living God receive the grace for visibility in the name of Jesus I break limits territorial limits cultural limits in the name of Jesus Christ help them please I call you out, out of cultures. I call you out. I pull you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ. number three now hear me I want to release the grace for speed and many people will start running by the anointing you don't have to bring them out but just help them so they don't injure themselves in the name of Jesus I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and for every ministry every business here receive speed 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 up Help them, please help them. Speed. I release that grace. I release that mantle. I release that grace. I release that mantle. I release that grace. Speed in ministry. Ten years in one year. One year in one month. Alibara, you are the mighty God. Hey, I told you, you are the Alibara. You are the mighty God. One more time. hallelujah I want to declare the favor of God upon you I don't know how people live without it Reverend Sam I don't know how people excel without the favor of God but I want you to believe me that when this mantle actually enters your life you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen right now in the name of Jesus for as many whose hearts are open to receive I stretch my hands right now. Receive the grace for favor. Receive the grace for favor. Favor in the city. Favor in the country. Favor in Abuja. Favor in Lagos. Favor in Europe. Favor in America. 
favor the Caribbeans all over the globe. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you're about to receive the last and then I'm done. The grace for signs and wonders. Listen, in an era of faking miracles, telling lies, state managing all kinds of things, it is absolutely unnecessary when you carry this grace. There are many of you right now who have the call of God upon your life. It takes more than a message. You will need the backing of heaven. Signs, wonders, manifestations of power. I want to agree with you. And then I'll ask Reverend Sam to come and I truly believe that he's going to declare that grace upon your life. I don't know where you are. You may be a man of God, a prophet, an apostle. Signs and wonders will distinguish you. It can brand a man and put you in a class of relevance even for the sake of his majesty. I'm praying right now. Maybe not for everybody, but for someone who has cried. Some of you have seen it in dreams. There will be a mighty outpouring right now. Father, I declare, at the count of three, please everyone shout Jesus, and that grace rests upon you. Father, that you honor your word. Let there be mighty impartations for signs and wonders. Are you ready? At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. I activate the miraculous in ministry. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. You will be a woman of God with power and fire. You will be a man of God with power and fire. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Basca Nakata Branda Katekapos, Kate Branda Katapakotosko to break a take and let the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.